it is great to see you, brother. And uh, of course, one of the reasons why is the last time you and I had a chance to speak, it was on some new music at the time. And that new music has now made itself some history, my friend, because <laughs> as we speak, we are just over a week away from, I would say, what we call it again, Canada's biggest music night, Canada's biggest music weekend, Canada's biggest music week. Brother, what are you involved with? What are you nominated for? And of course, what are you part of, man, for 2022? Uh, dude, thank you so much. Well, I am Matthew V, and next week is the Juno Awards. It is my first time ever being nominated. Um, uh, my project, thank you, thank you. Uh, my project, The Outer Circle, is nominated for Adult Contemporary Album of the Year, which is wild. It's something that I've had on my, my bucket list, uh, you know, uh, notes app for uh, ever since I started my career. And something that I thought would have happened if, if it would happen at some time down the road in the future. So it's, it's just such a huge honor. I'm, I'm really stoked about it. Where were you when you heard that you got nominated? <laughs> okay, so I was, I, I had, I guess when we submitted for the Junos, I just put a little note in my calendar of when I knew that the nominations were happening. Didn't look at it until the day came, and I was heading to New York, and I was on the tarmac of uh, just, just about to take off. They're doing the whole safety thing. My phone's probably supposed to be off, and I get a little calendar notification. It's like, hey, the live stream is starting right now. You should go check it out. So I, I open the live stream and the guy beside me is talking to me. And I'm looking up at the safety thing and I'm looking back down at my phone and I'm like, hey, what's happening? I'm, I'm missing a lot of the things here. And then uh, all that's happening, I look down and I just see my face. I'm okay, something happened. <laughs> Either I'm in big trouble or something good happened. <laughs> so uh, uh, I found out and then like pretty much right after that, wheels took off, phones on in played mode. So uh, I... Normally, I'd like want to like call a bunch of people, and be like, "Hey, guess what?" But I was held captive in the air for like five hours just to sit with this news, uh, which honestly was really nice. I got to kind of celebrate it for myself, and then uh, landed, and the chaos ensued. <laughs> Fast, fastest fingers I've 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 ever ever typed, but uh, uh, yeah, it was definitely a uh, uh, inconvenient but also convenient moment to to find out. <laughs> so you didn't do any of the like you know you're on the plane and they're serving you like water you're like. I'm a Juno nominee. I want, you know, Don Perry. Oh, do you know what uh, who I am now? <laughs> That's been every flight since. I really, <laughs> really had to let it sink in, and then now I can really, leave. I, now I can really lean into that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I am so so happy with you. Let's talk about the EP, and let's go back to it again. What is the EP called? I know you mentioned it, but I always like yeah. to make it official. What's the Absolutely. EP called, and what is it about? How does it represent you even now? Absolutely. Yeah. So the EP is called The Outer Circle and uh, it, it represents the Outer Circle of Regent's Park, which is in London. And I lived there when I was 17 and 18 years old. And as soon as the pandemic hit, I was sitting down in my apartment. And after you know two months passes, three months passes, six months passes, I was like, oh, this might be a bit longer than I thought it was going to be. And I'm, I'm twiddling my thumbs. and I'm like, well, I'm not going to write about the walks that I take every day. I'm not going to like, there, there was no, li there was no living for me to like really get my hands on and uh, write about and sing about other than being, you know, trapped or locked away. And I, I didn't feel like I could do that. I was like, I'm living it every day. I feel like, I don't feel like I need to talk about that. And I certainly don't want to live it eight months from now, hopefully when this thing is over, at least that's what I felt at the time. So I figured that there was so many opportunities for me to like look back at all the stuff and all the situations and the impactful years of my life that I just kind of like, Push, I was able to push down because things were busy. It's really easy when things are busy just to push feelings down and moments down and just move forward because you're in a bit of a rat race and you're just you're just moving forward. So I was able to really sit and kind of open Pandora's box and I realized that there was a lot of good stuff in there that I could kind of go through that I think would help me uh, in my growth as a personal uh, human being. And uh, But besides that, I think that I had some good stuff to write about. So, <laughs> uh, so I kind of sifted through all of my, all my dirty laundry and uh, yeah, that... <laughs> What, what what a wonderful way for me to promote my project. <laughs> Sounds like dirty laundry. <laughs> no, but uh, I definitely was able to kind of go through some of those experiences, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of what I kind of pulled out of that. Would this have happened if there wasn't a pandemic? Oh, it, you know what? Probably not. I probably, well, I probably would have had so many new experiences that I would have felt were so, like, on the tip of my tongue that I could have really written about and gotten into in that moment. But I remember just sitting and I was like, 
trying to BS some stories about like, I'm like, well, hypothetically, if this happened, how would I feel about it? <laughs> we sit down and try to try to write about that. And that was not leading me anywhere good. So I was like, okay, what, what are some of these, these strong feelings that I had that I would never think about right now that I can really touch upon. So uh, I don't think if there wasn't a pandemic, it, it, it would have happened. I told myself I wasn't going to write a pandemic project and in turn, I kind of did <laughs> uh, uh, with some, some sort of a runaround way there. But, uh, but yeah, uh, it probably would not have happened. Now, I'm just curious, have you been doing any shows in between all of this? So, we've been getting our foot back into, or like our toe back in the door, uh, mm-hmm. as, as of right now, which has felt so good, but um, there was a, a, a period there a few months ago where like things were booking and then they were canceling, and then things were booking and then they were canceling. Um, so, it, it I, I don't want to, I'm going to knock on wood after I say this, it seems to me that things are slowly happening again. Okay, so, so you have done a show or two here and there. Yes. Just yes. curious, have you been introduced as Juno nominee? <laughs> so I've had one show since the Juno nomination, and I think it was like a week after or something. So I was able to kind of name drop that. Uh, and then my mom cheered, and she's like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> because but, you, uh, so I, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I was going to say, because you realize, win or lose, for the rest of your career, that word Juno is now connected to you. Absolutely. And thank you for saying that. And it's like, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm really trying to, to sit in. And I look at even my category and, um, who won these, these last few years. I think it's like Michael Bublé, Alanis Morissette, Sarah McLaughlin, yeah. um, uh, Brian Adams. And I look last year and like my idol Celine Dion did not win the Juno. So it's like, I'm, I'm more than honored to be nominated. I'm like, if Celine Dion's not walking home with it, I'm just happy to be in the room at this point. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a huge honor. It's something that I will be, carrying forward if not like wearing a badge when i go to the grocery store like guess what everyone look <laughs> i love that man <laughs> and you know what and you should you should enjoy the experience you you absolutely deserve it so any word yet as we are creeping through for juno week are we going to see you like maybe at a fan fest are you going to be part of some circle anything going on with that so i'm going to be very prevalent my publicist just sent me my my, my week next week and I opened up, I was like, wow, okay, so I'm going to need to schedule some bathroom breaks in there. I'm going to need to make sure that I'm packing enough outfits. I can't outfit repeat this week. Got to make sure I'm checking a bag. Uh, but uh, no, it's uh, it's going to be a busy week. You'll, you'll see me on the red carpet. I'll be doing a bunch of press. I'll be doing, a, I'll be, I'll be at a lot of stuff to which I can't even tell you right now because I don't have my calendar in front of me, but I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff. You'll be seeing a lot of Juno content on my social media and, and all of that good stuff. Well, brother, I'll be on the red carpet, too. I'm going to be there in the uh, media room also. So awesome. we will get a chance to to talk. Um, and I cannot wait to talk to you later on when other projects come up, because I want to know exactly what this experience has been like for you. Look, as we're slowly wrapping this up, um, what, what advice do you want to give artists out there who are following their dreams, who have had a hard time during this pandemic without shows and things like that. I mean, you took a negative and you definitely turned it into a positive. What can you say to them? Thank you very much for saying that. Um, I think that at the end of the day, every, every time you push through a wall, you swim through a a big wave, you become a better swimmer. And on the other end, uh, you're able to take bigger waves you're able to like deal with things a lot better once you push through these certain obstacles and although they are hard and they're tough and they suck the good stuff doesn't feel good without the bad to compare it to um and i I think that it tastes that much sweeter when you when you really push through those hard times and this is an industry unfortunately where like you get tens of thousands of no's and it really just takes one important yes on the other end of that so i would say keep going It, it only really stops when you throw in the towel but as long as you keep getting out there and keep and keep pushing, and keep working and keep growing, there's always a new opportunity. It, it's, it's an industry that has 10,000 no's because there's 800,000 million doors that you can knock on and different opportunities that, that you could take, different ways that you could get creative to kind of build your own window even if you have to. So I would say keep pushing. Know that no's come with the business. That's a whole part of it. So take that, let it roll off your back and just keep, keep pushing forward. Brother, congratulations on the success. I will see you on the red carpet. A good luck in whatever happens. But, man, no matter what, like I said, Juno and you are now like this, man. Congrats.
Thank you so much. Thanks so much for your time, Rudy.